Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. This is the first Sunday in the Lenten year, and so we are going to begin a new sermon series called The Struggles. And over the next six Sundays, we're going to look at these struggles as they play themselves out in the Psalms. And so tonight, we're going to look at King David's Psalm, Psalm 3, and our focus is simply going to be this, the struggle against the enemy. In the big sense, you and I, we have struggles every single day from different types of enemies. And even in the, the more narrower sense, that struggle against the devil day in and day out. So we ask God to help us in that endeavor. I invite you right now to rise as we will begin our worship service as it's printed out in the worship folder and as you will also find it on the screen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is God's power to us who are being saved. For it is written, Where is the philosopher? Where is the scholar? Where is the debater of this age? Hasn't God made the world's wisdom foolish? Dear Father in heaven, we are born sinful and often allow human reason and strength to challenge our trust in your perfect wisdom and power. Instead of living in your word, we are tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching. Forgive us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit to renew our hearts and minds with the sole message of the cross, that we may humbly believe and abide in your truth and grace to life eternal. Amen. Since in God's wisdom, the world did not know God through wisdom, God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of the message preached. For the Jews asked for signs, and the Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. God has forgiven you all your sins in the cross of Jesus Christ. He chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Congregation may be seated as we hear the soloist.
Our first lesson is recorded by Moses in the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first 18 verses. Here we have the account that's familiarly known as the sacrifice of Isaac. Moses writes, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. Abraham answered, I am here. God said, Now take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains there, the one to which I direct you. Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, along with Isaac, his son. Abraham split the wood for the burnt offering. Then he set out to go to the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go on over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the knife in his hand. The two of them went on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, I am here, my son. He said, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them went on together. And they came to the place that God had told him about. Abraham built the altar there. He arranged the wood, tied up Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, I am here. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked around and saw that behind him there was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the place, the name of that place, the Lord will provide. So it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will bless you greatly, and I will multiply your descendants greatly like the stars of the sky and like the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Here ends the reading. We now hear the soloist sing the psalm of the day, which will also then serve today as our sermon text.
Please rise. We hear the verse of the day. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Our Holy Gospel lesson for this first Sunday in Lent is recorded by St. Mark in the Gospel, the first chapter, beginning there at the 12th verse. The Spirit immediately sent Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels were serving him. After John, that's John the baptizer, Jesus' cousin, after John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The time is fulfilled, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the gospel. Here ends the gospel lesson. Congregation may be seated as we now hear the soloist sing the hymn of the day. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome, my Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. The text for our consideration is Psalm 3. O Lord, how my foes are multiplying, many are rising up against me. Many are saying about my life, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me. You are my glory and the one who lifts up my head. With a loud voice I cry out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I awake because the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of the thousands of people who line up against me on all sides. Rise up, O Lord, save me, my God. Yes, you will strike all my enemies on the jaw. The teeth of the wicked you will break. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing rests on your people. We pray, O Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is the truth. Amen. Struggles are real. We all have them. 
Struggles become even more difficult when they show up because of an enemy. And if you have struggles that are brought about by an enemy, and that enemy is stronger than you, and that enemy is somebody that you love or have loved, then the battle is heart-wrenching. Enter King David. David wrote this psalm as he was fleeing the capital from his son Absalom, who was trying to take over the throne. Remember how David got here? David had chosen to have an affair with Bathsheba. Mind you, we at this point know he had at least seven wives. And so to cover up the affair, to cover up the unplanned pregnancy, he had her husband Uriah, the Hittite soldier, killed. That led to, if you were uh, able to catch the service on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday here, that led to God telling his prophet Nathan to go tell David that his unborn child was going to die. But Nathan was also told by God to tell King David this. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his eyes? So now, the sword will not depart from your house forever, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. This is what the Lord says. Look, I am raising up disaster against you from your own house. Right in front of your eyes, I will take your wives and give them to your neighbor, and he will lie down with your wives in the sight of the sun. Because you acted in secret, I will do this in front of all Israel in broad daylight. Nathan's prophecy was coming to fulfillment here as David was hiding out likely in a cave writing the psalm. The sword of his family was pointed right at him. We know then that as that's happening, Absalom, Absalom would commit adultery with some of David's concubines as they were so kind to put a big tent up on top of the palace so all Israel knew what Absalom was doing. Now, David was just like you and me. He was a sinner in need of a savior. And so you have to wonder, as he's hiding out in this cave, as he is to the point before he writes this psalm, if he was sitting there kicking himself for his situation, was he wondering, you know, if only I hadn't put myself in this place. If only I had been happy with the blessings God had given me, and if I would have followed God's will, I would not be in this situation. David was no different than any sinner before or after him. And yet it sure seems, as we read through this psalm, that he is probably different than you and me in at least one way. If he had regret for his bad parenting and all the mistakes he had made up in, to this point in his life, he did not dwell on them very long. We can tell that from, from the psalm that's before us. And nor, nor, more importantly, did he look to himself for the solution to the problem. No, instead, he tells us here that he cried out to the Lord of heaven and earth. He cried out to his shield. He was confident. He was confident that although God's earthly king for his earthly chosen people was being driven out of Mount Zion in Jerusalem that David's Messiah king was on the true Mount Zion in heaven. And so therefore he knew that no matter what, in some way, shape, or form, he trusted that God would deliver him. Folks, Christians are always in danger. We're always in danger as the big three, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh, as well as the different enemies you and I fight on a daily basis want to come in and they want to harm us like David in both body and soul. And just like David, who was being attacked in body and soul, in this case by his own son, under the influence of the devil, 
Satan wants to do that to you, and he wants to do it to me day in and day out. And so because of that, you and I, we can. It's not arrogance. We can cry out with David, just like he says here, and say, O oh Lord, how my foes are multiplying, many are rising up against me. And the reality is, is that some of those enemies you and I have in our life, it is the result of us living in a fallen world. Unfortunately, many of them, though, are not for that reason, but are rather because you and I, at times, we like to, far too often, follow our sinful instincts and desires and do just like David did. And too often, we don't show the same faith that David had, and we start to turn to ourselves for the solution. And when we turn to ourselves for solutions, our solutions only make the problem much, much worse. Thinking that by maybe abusing alcohol or drugs, somehow they're going to shield us from the pain and the hurt. Or turning to ungodly sex, thinking that that somehow is the answer and solution to get rid of that pain and suffering and hurtful memory. Or maybe sometimes what we do is we like to try to lie. We lie to our loved ones, thinking that's the solution because it's going to protect us and them from the dirty truth. Or that gossip, that gossip and somehow is going to be the solution because it's going to turn all these people's attention off of us and instead put it on somebody else. But the reality is that none of our solutions, folks, act like a shield, but rather they only complicate the matter and they only allow Satan to be stronger and our enemies to try to overtake us more and more. And then we begin, unlike David, to question God's help and protection. But you know what? Just like David, you do not need to fear your enemies, no matter who or what they may be. You do not need to fear if your foes, if your enemies are multiplying in your life in what seems like to be a daily basis, because just like David, you have a Lord and Savior in heaven who is and will always be your shield. That was alluded to already in the gospel lesson today, wasn't it? Jesus, after being baptized, went out into the wilderness. The devil went there to tempt him. The devil would continue to do that. It's not like after 40 days he stopped, but rather he would continue to go on and do that for all of Jesus' earthly life. But no matter what struggle and what enemy Jesus had to face, he never stopped living a perfect life for you and me, and he never gave in to any of those struggles or any of his enemies. When the foes rose up and they multiplied and they came after Jesus, he continued to live that perfect life. In the Garden of Gethsemane on Monday, Thursday, Satan was there and he whispered in his ear, there is no salvation for him in God. But Jesus remained strong, and he drank that cup of suffering and struggle that you and I were supposed to drink as he said, not my will, but yours be done. And then he willingly went to the cross to die. And what's amazing with this psalm is in very much the same way that the enemies of David call out to him and say, there is no salvation for him in God, Jesus, in a very similar fashion, had his enemies say that about him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. But on the cross, God the Father, he didn't shield his son. So that you and I, so we can be shielded forever. When Jesus raised up his voice to God the Father on the true Mount Zion of heaven... God the Father turned his back on it. So you are never going to have to have God turn his back on you. And as he hung on that cross, God the Father, unlike David, did not raise up his son in the, uh, his head. 
but rather it was Jesus himself who raised up his head and cried out, it is finished. And then he gave up his spirit. And folks, when that happened, our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit brought this prophecy to fulfillment, and they struck all, all their enemies on the jaw and crushed all their teeth. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He, Jesus, will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And the result, folks, the result of Christ's suffering in shouldering our enemies in our suffering is that as you sit here, no matter what you've done, your sins are forgiven. Heaven is yours. And one day, one day you are going to have an eternity where you will have no suffering, and you will have no enemies at that moment when God decides you to come out of this world of suffering. But Lord willing, for most of you, that's a long time away. And so he leaves you with another blessing as well. By him shouldering your enemies and my enemies, by him shouldering your struggles in my struggles, you have complete and utter hope and comfort. Because the one who lived and died for you, the one who destroyed the power of the enemies who seek to harm you day in and day out in both your life and your soul, he sustains you every single day. In his word, he helps you block out those voices, whether they're external voices or internal voices that you hear telling you that there is no salvation for you and God because how could you do that? He gets those voices out of there. And through his own body and blood he gives you in his supper, he feeds you with himself to calm your soul and to give you the strength to fight against your enemies, to fight against the struggles that are in your life. And in his grace, in his mercy, the power and the blessings that he gives you in his means of grace, your Lord and your Savior makes it possible. So like David, you can lie down and sleep and then wake up the next day because he is always, always watching over you. Folks, I do not know who or what the enemy or the enemies are in your life that you have to struggle with on a daily basis. I, I don't know if they're enemies outside of you. I don't know if they're enemies inside of you. Or maybe a combo of both. What I do know, though, is this. That you have a Lord and Savior who loved you so much, he wanted, he wanted to live and die and rise for you. And because that is the Savior that watches over you every day, and because he gave his all for you, you can be confident that no matter what the struggle is that you have in your life right now, no matter who that enemy may be, he is more than capable of handling it for you. And so like David, I encourage you, run to him in prayer. Run to him in his word to seek his strength, his solutions, and his power for your life. Because then you can be confident. No matter if you're sleeping or you're awake, he will be the one fighting your battles and will never leave you or forsake you. Because salvation belongs to the Lord. His blessings rest on you, his people. Amen. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore world without end. Amen. Please rise. We now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated again, and you may be remain seated for the rest of the service. We will now hear uh, the Wells Connection. Uh, before that, though, I want to make an announcement. To please fill out the connection card, if you would, just so we have a record of your visit with us. Uh, there's also a backside to it, too, if you have any prayer requests and that kind of thing. After the Wells Connection, then, what will happen is the uh, offering plate will be brought forward as the soloist sings the next hymn. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. You're likely aware that Wells Christian Aid and Relief responds to events like hurricanes and tornadoes where a whole community is suffering. But another facet of the work focuses on tragedies that affect just a single family, personal grants that can make a life-changing difference for individuals in need. Lake Mills is a, a wonderful bedroom community, has a lot to offer to families, not only in raising them, but also in the activities on the lake. St. Paul has played an important role in the history of the Lake Mills area. The church has always been there. That has been the constant. That doesn't go anywhere. The ability to go and share in God's word and pray together and ask people to pray for you. And it's a normal Wednesday night, and Landon had started screaming that he had a belly bad headache, and it, was, and it was really bad. It was Ash Wednesday of 2019. It was during, I believe, uh, the time of our Lent service. Uh, he had the seizure. I'll never forget this, because it's embedded in my head. I told my brother once to call 911, something's really wrong here. He took him right to Children's Hospital in Madison. He had a massive brain bleed, and it, his outcome was uncertain that he, if he was even going to make it alive after this. So Landon spent about 10 days, he was in a coma. Is he going to wake up? How, how do you make this decision about your 8-year-old child and just, like, hope that it's going to work, you know? And then as time, you know, progressed, and we were there for quite some time. I mean, Landon was there from March to September. It was very traumatic for everyone, especially when you see a young man go through such an experience, wondering whether or not he would survive this life. But we were also very confident that if that was the Lord's will, we knew that he would be in heaven with his Savior. At that time, he was, Lana was not talking a lot of the time, but he went out of his way to tell the pastor to read him a Bible verse. We had made arrangements uh, that we as pastors would go to the house. I walked into his room, and the first thing he said to me is, Pastor, it's good to see you. Can you please read me a Bible story about Jesus? Read a Bible verse. Because I wanted to remember Jesus. Jesus means that he died on the cross for all of us. What I loved about all of the pastors at St. Paul's is every single one of them reached out and they were like, what, what can we do to help you? Can we come and visit? Can we pray with you? Can we pray for you? What, does, what do you need from us? Well, when I realized, you know, how much it was going to cost uh, for the family to purchase a handicapped accessible van, which legally they had to do uh, to transport him, 
um, I knew that there was a way for us now to help them. And I found out about Christian Aid and Relief and how they can help in this way from another pastor. We do personal grants for people in our congregations who are just struggling in some aspect of life. Maybe they've got some uh, major medical bills uh, or some other financial challenge. And so we work together with congregations who contact us uh, to give those people some uh, financial uh, assistance that they need. It was just amazing. And our, and our congregation uh, to date has collected almost $20,000 to help pay for that van. And the balance was covered by Christian Aid and Relief. And without their help, I don't think that would have been possible. <laughs> it's always amazing how God finds another way to get you there or to answer a prayer you maybe didn't even know you had. And so we got the van. I mean, within six weeks, Pastor was like, here you go. We've got this. We're going to help you. It was the Lord who held them up, and it was his strength that carried them through. And they regularly <laughs> confessed that, and that was beautiful. It's just so humbling. People who we have never met, never will meet here on earth who were willing to help Landon and help us do the things that are most important is still to be able to travel together and um, ultimately it's to go back and have Landon worship his Savior in, in church. To see the relief and I think that's what Christian Aid and Relief is all about. Giving them the relief that they're not alone and that they have others they can count on. Landon's story is a beautiful illustration how Wells Christian Aid and Relief offers opportunities to demonstrate our Christian love. Whether it's a natural disaster, or a need at one of our world missions, or a family that's hurting, Wells Christian Aid and Relief is there as a way to show love to our neighbor, reflecting the great love Jesus has shown us.
now join our hearts in prayer. Uh, this evening, we want to remember Autumn Sievert, that's the mother of uh, Travis Stewart, our congregational president, as uh, his mother has recovering at home now from leg surgery after having leg surgery this week. So we put her in our prayers. Let us pray. O oh Lord, God, most high, almighty, fortress and shield, we praise you for your providence which has brought us to this hour. In the midst of many dangers, temptations, and struggles, we are still your children by your grace through faith in Jesus. Trusting in your grace and mercy and believing your promises to hear our prayers, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. We give you special thanks, O Lord, for sending your Son into the world to become true man. Thank you that when he was tempted, as we are, he did not yield to sin, but remained obedient to you for our sake. When Satan tempts us through our fleshly appetites, the riches of this world and our love for honor and prestige, help us to use your word as our weapon and shield against him. We confess, O oh Lord, that we often live as if bread for our bodies is more important than the food for our souls. We confess, O oh Lord, that we often forget to use your word as the source of all strength in fighting temptation. For these and many other transgressions, forgive us, O oh Lord. As we read, study, and hear your word, send us your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds and strengthen our faith. May your word prove to be the power of healing to the sick, a ray of hope to the discouraged, and a companion to the lowly. We also ask, Lord, that you would watch over Autumn Sievert, strengthen her against temptation, give her patience and joy in the knowledge that you will make all things work out for the good of those who rest in your love. According to your will, restore her to a full recovery that she may continue to give her life to you as one of service until that we are all with you in everlasting joy. O oh Lord, grant peace to our nation and also help us to live according to your will. We ask this all in Jesus' name as we pray this and join together and pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless, Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. And may we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
Again, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. Thank you for joining us. A couple of announcements here uh, on the beacon that I want to draw your attention to. Uh, on the front side there, we have the schedule for the midweek Lenten services, and you can see who's coming up and preaching uh, in the coming weeks. Also, please remember that we have Christians in Conflict Bible study going on in here tomorrow in between services, as well as the Sunday school is back up and going to be running again this week. On the back page, I'd like to point out the fact that preschool enrollment, it's time uh, where Jesus Loves Me Learning Center. If you know anybody or have anybody that could be enrolled there next year, they're already taking applications for that. There's going to be the kindergarten roundup over at Risen Savior there you see on March 11th. And then also we were asked to point out the MVL pork chop meal. Uh, please take the time to look at that announcement as well. For those of you who know, uh, don't know me, or even if you do, I'm Pastor Schmidt. I'm no longer Dean Schmidt, and I'm actually not a guest here anymore. If you know, I was installed last uh, week, so I'm very excited for the opportunity to serve you as, as your full-time pastor now, along with Pastor Nelson and working with Mr. Voss and the rest of the staff. So I look forward in the coming weeks and months to get to know all of you, and um, I, I'm very much looking forward to it. You'll see me around a bunch, I would think. So I have no more announcements for you this evening, so as you leave, I would encourage you to look around, say hi to people, obviously socially distanced-wise, uh, but uh, uh, say hello, and may the Lord bless your week.